Hello and welcome back. My name is Mary Van Dyke. I'm the owner of Finding Grandpa. It's a genealogical research service. I'm doing a series of videos on what happens in your ancestry.com tree. This particular video is about cleaning your tree every once in a while, looking specifically for clones. I'm going to show you how to identify them and label them and possibly merge them with the duplicates or possibly delete them. There are four levels of difficulty in, the, in this video. This first one is pretty easy. To clean your tree, you need to go to list of all people and review what you already have. To do that, in the upper left corner, next to the name of your tree, click the people icon. A pop-up box appears and shows you a list of all people. Click that. It will usually take you to the beginning of your tree and is alphabetized by last name and there's 100 people per page. This particular example, I'm going to show you the letter U. I can either select the last name of U from the alphabet or, for example, I could also filter it, type in the first name field, and show me everybody that's named Mary, or in the last name, everybody that's named Smith. And it will filter my whole tree by just those fields. And again, in this example, I'm going to show you the letter U. There are several duplicates that are in this tree. I call them clones. Here is clone Ole. Then I have Asta. There are two Astas, two Andreas, and there's actually two Daniels. One is in the tree as Daniel Ingvald, and the other one is in the tree as Ingvald Daniel. I'm going to show you how to do Asta. When I clean a tree, I always right-click and open the people in a new tab. That will allow this particular page to stay easily accessible. If I simply clicked Asta's name and went to her, then I have to work my way back to the letter U's by upper left corner, select list of all people, go to the front of the tree, then select the U's to get back to this page. If I open in a new tab, this screen stays here and I edit in a new tab. So I'm going to go over this over and over and over again. When I'm editing someone or viewing a record, I always open it in a new tab. Then I right-click the second Asta and open her in a new tab. This is the first Asta. I'm looking for birth and death information. I'm looking for what records are attached to her. And I'm looking for what family members are attached. And notice she has no family. There are no children, spouse, or parents for this girl. She's hanging out in limbo. She is not, she's typed into my tree, but she's not attached. She's like a floating leaf on the air. There is no branch or twig she's attached to. The other Asta, also birth and death information. I'm looking at what records are attached, but she has family and siblings. So I know, okay, something happened when I was loading a record and it created a clone Asta with no parents. I'm going to go into Merge with Duplicate. When I click that button, this is the screen I see. On the left side is the Asta that has parents. Ancestry recognizes um, person number two that gives me a possibility of what it sees as a potential clone, and it will be displayed there. I can either select her or I can start typing a name if I don't think she's the real clone I want to merge. And type the name into that box and it, a drop down box will appear and I can select from the list. As I click Asta Louise on the right, that Ancestry said was probably my clone, I selected her. I compare the information on the left with the information on the right. This is basically a screenshot capture of what's going on with both people. And Ancestry says name, birth, and death are all the same. It also says in the blue box that if merging, it combines the facts, the media items, and the sources for these two people into one person. So I click Merge, and she's now merged as one person. Back on, I click, I close the tab, 
and back on the list of all people. I refresh my page and now I only see one Asta. So I know it worked. Then I'm going to move to her brother Andreas. Right click both of them and open them in a new tab. The first one, again, has no parents or family or siblings, spouse, nothing is attached. This person again is hanging out. But I also notice that Andreas has the same set of parents, Daniel and Ingborg. As soon as I merged these two people, I spotted something. I wanted to double check the siblings. I'm going to pay attention to this whole family because something must have happened when I was attaching records that created duplicates of at least two of their children. So I'm going to pay attention to who else is in the tree so that I can um, be quicker when I'm doing the merge, when I'm working down my use. And I also noticed something about their mother. When I clicked on Ingeborg and opened her page up, her last name is showing Eunice. Her husband's name is Eunice. Her father's name is Motland. Her name needs to be Motland. You always, always want to put a woman in your tree with her last name that was her maiden name. You never want to put a woman in your tree that has a last name of her married name because Ancestry will not look for the correct records for Ingeborg Motland if she's in your tree as Ingeborg Unis. To do this edit, upper right corner, well, my first option could be clicking the name and gender and editing there, but I prefer to go into the quick edit mode. Upper right corner, click edit, select quick edit. Notice the name Motland. It is not her last name. So Ancestry isn't going to look for any records named Ingeborg Motland. It's only going to look for Ingeborg Eunice. So I'm going to highlight Eunice and delete. Now, if you're a keyboard user, highlight Motland and delete and manually type it in her last name. It's safer. But if you right click after you highlight Motland and cut, then paste, you could end up with a space in front of her last name. And zoom in. There's a space in front of Motland, and I had to manually delete that space. And there's another zoom in. It's pertinent because it's not going to alphabetize or it's not going to recognize Motland. There's a space in there. You have to be very careful when you're doing someone's name or date or birth or death locations. You have to be careful about spaces. While I'm in this screen, I'm also going to fix the birth and the death date. And that's why I use Quick Edit. Because not only can I manipulate names, I can correct genders if they're living or deceased. I can edit birth and death information. I can do multiple tasks in the Quick Edit mode. So I use this one often. Now she's in the tree correctly as a Motland, as her last name. And I've already edited her birth and death dates. Now we're going to get a little harder. This next example are John Warners. I have three John Warners in my tree, and as I go through my tree, I need to open them all up and review them all. Now the first person, born in 1671, died 1743, is probably not a clone or a duplicate of the second one, because he died 1700. But the third one could be, and I have to look at all of them because I don't know if the third one is a duplicate of John number one or John number two. So right click, open in a new tab. The first one shows his birth and death information. I'm looking at the records attached and I'm paying attention to family members. This John number one has a dad, Andrew, and a mom, Rebecca Fletcher. John number two who died 1700, has one record attached. His dad is Andrew, but his mom is Mary Humphrey. So clearly, John number one and John number two are not duplicates. John number three, no birth or death, a different record attached, but his parents are Andrew and Mary Humphrey. He is a clone of John number two. I wanted to see if there was any other problems with this family. So I went to look at Dad's page. I'm just doing a little research before I doing my merge. I click on Andrew, 
and I scroll down to see how many wives and how many kids he has. And he just has Mary Humphrey, and there are only two clones in his tree for his children. John Warner, who died 1700, and John with no date. So, okay, this is a very minor um, clone issue. It's not a big family issue, like I don't have to deal with the whole family. But I go back to the John with no date. I click Merge with Duplicate. Ancestry recognizes a potential John. He's the one who died 1700. I'm going to go ahead and select him. Now my person number one, John, is the no date. Person number two, notice his death date at the bottom. I'm going to look at the source that person number one has. It's the Essex uh, Parish Registers, Baptism Registers, but the box says these sources will be combined with person number two sources upon the merge. So I won't lose that record. John number two's source says the North American family history. They have two different records, but Ancestry assures me that they're both going to be there when I do the merge. Again, blue box. Merging combines the facts, which is going to be person number two's death date, and the media items, any photographs or stories I've loaded, and sources, the two different records that are attached. They're going to combine it all into the one person. When I click Merge, sure enough, both records are there. But I have to pay attention to make sure both records are there. Because I can't trust Ancestry's tree 100%, I only trust it 99%. I'm not, I didn't write the software. So I don't know what happens until after I start clicking. I have to double check to make sure there are no issues. And we're going to take it up to a little more difficult level. This next example, I'm going back to the beginning of my tree list of all people. And I don't have it filtered by any last name or first name. This is the beginning of my tree. And notice all the women have no last names. This is sorted by last name. So if there is no last name, they're listed first. So technically this section in my tree is alphabetized by the ladies' first names. I have 11, 13, there were 13 Elizabeths in this tree. And I actually found two of them were clones of each other and went ahead and did the merge and put those two women together. However, after I merged those two Elizabeths, she now has two different Johns for a husband and two different Elizabeths for a daughter. So I have to do a little more work in this. First thing I'm going to do is label this Elizabeth. I'm going to go to the Edit tab. Under Quick Edit, I'm going to type in the suffix, not her last name, in the suffix because it doesn't impact ancestry hunting for records. It's always safer to put something here. I'm going to type in wife of John Woodbury. I want to label this Elizabeth over all the other Elizabeths in my tree so I can find her quickly. I want her to pop in this list. I found her in my pedigree view and this is pertinent to go in to the pedigree view page and select the people who you see here and label them from the pedigree view. This John and this Elizabeth, wife of John Woodbury, are the parents of this Elizabeth born 1654. They're the preferred couple. If I go through the list of all people and start labeling them there, I will mess up my tree. I need to label who I'm going to keep in my tree because they're linked in my pedigree view. It's critical. To do that, I'm going to select John Woodbury's name. A pop-up box appears and I right-click his name and open his page in a new tab. And I jump right to his profile page. Upper right corner, click Edit, click Quick Edit, and now I'm going to label him Keep. When I'm done, that's where he is. John Label, John, sorry, John Woodbury Keep is husband of Elizabeth, wife of John Woodbury. I've now identified the people in my tree that's a direct line to me.
I must keep this particular couple. When I went to the W's and was working the John Woodberries, I've got three men. One of them is labeled keep. So I know which one is my direct line link that I must keep. The other two, I don't know how they're related or what their pages say. Again, right click, open them all in a new tab and look at them. The first John has a dad, John Woodbury and Agnes, but he's the husband of Elizabeth. Now I know this is my clone because his last name doesn't say keep. I know this one's my clone, but he's got parents, so I can't just delete this guy. The second John is John, husband of Agnes, father of John Woodbury, the clone. Again, the son that's listed down the right side doesn't have the word keep. So this is dad John. And the third John is my keep. He's got no parents. He is husband of Elizabeth father of the other Elizabeth. So this is the man I'm going to keep. When I click merge with duplicate, now I've got an issue. One of these two Johns that Ancestry recognizes could be a clone is the clone and one of them is dad. I can't figure out which is which. What am I going to do? Who am I going to pick? I go back to John the clone. I go into quick edit and I label him. This is John Clone. Back in my merge process, when I click Merge with Duplicate, now I see John Woodbury Clone. When I select him, it defaults to keeping John Woodbury Keep. That button is selected, and it says it's selected as my preferred fact. On the other side, if I clicked that button, it will be the preferred fact. But right now, if I merge, John Woodbury clone, that name, will be saved as an alternate fact. So I click merge. However, his name changed. Now I'm looking at John Woodbury clone. So I can't honestly say if I didn't mess up when I was actually creating these slides for the presentation for this video if I accidentally clicked the wrong button. I do not know what happened. I don't know if the software glitched, but I can fix this. I go into name and gender. When I click on that, both names pop up. Clone is the preferred, keep is the alternate. I'm going to click on keep, click the edit button. Down at the bottom is the preferred option. If I check it and save, now his name is changed. The name that I prefer to see is John Woodbury Keep. Then I'm going to have to go in to the alternate name of clone because I don't need two names in here. I'm going to edit this and delete this fact. He doesn't need two names. I delete the, the John Woodbury clone name. A pop-up box will ask me, are you sure you want to do this? and I click delete. Now he only has one name and it's keep. Back on the profile page I now see the parents. When I did the merge the clones parents came into my keeps link and now I'm linked to John Woodbury and Agnes as the parents. Usually I wait until the end. I now see two Johns, I beg your pardon, after I check my profile page, I go back into my list of all people and double check, now I'm down to two Johns. One is the keep and one is dad John. Now, when I'm usually done with working a family line, or more often when I'm done the whole tree, I will go into the people that I typed keep or wife of, and I can delete that information so that my pedigree view, the people are in my tree correctly with just their names. I don't want to keep that information in the suffix. It was just a tool I used to help me when I'm cleaning my tree. Now we're going to take it to a real difficult level. I came across two Elizabeth Whites. I have to look at them both. 
I opened them both in new tabs. This one is got no dates for the birth, a record attached, no husband or parents, but gardener kids. So obviously this Elizabeth White married a gardener and had these children. The second Elizabeth has full dates, several records, a father, a husband Thomas Gardner, and children. One of them is Thomas Gardner. There's too many Thomas Gardners. It's a little confusing to me here. I have to do some research. So the first thing I did was go back to the profile page, selected the Elizabeth White that I see, because she is the preferred mother of Thomas Gardner who married Margaret Fryer. If I selected the other lady, I would lose the link to this Elizabeth's parents as well as Thomas's dad, Thomas. I must go through my profile page to label Elizabeth White. I opened her up. I did a quick edit. I added the name keep in the suffix. Looking at the clone potential. This Elizabeth White says she's got a son, Thomas George, born 1614. I wanted to look at these kids to see what they said. When I opened them up, he's got a different mom. His mom doesn't say Elizabeth White. His mom is Margaret Fryer. His dad is Thomas the Planter. So I went the upper right corner. I want to edit relationships. Oh, show me what relationships are him. He's got two moms. Margaret Fryer is the preferred mom, and that's why we see her on his profile page. And Elizabeth White is an alternate mom. So I went back and I said, okay, what is going on? Is it possible that Thomas, his dad, Thomas the planter, when I looked at him, could it be that he's got two wives? One is Elizabeth White and one is Margaret Fryer. Is it possible if he had two wives that when Ancestry merged a record, it didn't know which mom to give the, other, the kid? Thomas George, born 1614. When the record was going to attach to them, it might not have recognized which mom to use. So it created two moms for him. It turns out in this tree, Thomas the planter only has one wife, Margaret Fryer. But his mother is Margaret White Keep. His mother and his children are the same as the other Elizabeth Whites. Here's Thomas George, 1614. Something really messed up. And then I realized what happened. When I was cleaning the trees, I always go through alphabetically. When I was on the G's for Thomas Gardner, I realized he had a mother Elizabeth White and a wife Elizabeth White. Two sets of kids. One was with Elizabeth White that you see here, and the same set of kids with Margaret Fryer. And I thought, obviously I've got an issue. I need to really investigate the Elizabeth White. But right now when I was working on the Thomas the, the Gardener, the planter, when I was working the G's, I must work on, uh, I, I deleted her as a wife, which leaves this Elizabeth hanging out here with only children. Now, I went in and realized that I cannot merge this Elizabeth White with my Elizabeth White keep because Elizabeth White is the grandmother of these children. If I merged her, then all these grandkids would now pull with her to be her children with her husband. I can't merge them. But I also cannot immediately delete her. I must review all the children that are attached and I open them all up to make sure that they're linked properly to the correct set of parents and they are. So when I go to delete her, I'm not going to leave her children that are listed here down the right hanging out in limbo. But she also has a record attached to her that is not on my keeps list. This Elizabeth White I'm keeping doesn't have that record and I don't want to lose it. So the only thing I have to do now is attach this North America family history record to 
Elizabeth White Keep. I click on the record, select View. I want to view record, right click, open it in a new tab. Again, I always want to view in a new tab so I don't have to keep clicking my back browser, etc. When I do that, I click the Save button. I don't want to save this record to Elizabeth White because Elizabeth White is my clone, the lady I'm about to delete. I need to save it to Elizabeth White Keep. Now, this is another reason why I label people. Keep, or wife of, actually helps me identify the correct person I'm going to attach things to. It's a big help when I'm doing a major clean. So I click Save to someone else in your tree. As soon as I started typing out her name, Elizabeth White, the Elizabeth White Keep popped up in the drop-down box. I selected her. After I select her, I'm going to attach. Now it's going to go through the process of attaching this North American family history record to Elizabeth White Keep. It's about to give her new parents, but I already know John White is her father with an unknown mother. So I see the parents here. I don't have an issue with this. What I have an issue with is spouse. It's about to create a new person, Thomas Gardner. It's about to create a new person. I already know she has a son, Thomas Gardner. I already know she has a husband, Thomas Gardner. This Thomas Gardner is Thomas the Planter, her son, born 1592. I'm thinking, oh my God. Okay, this record is not only going to create a clone, a new person, but it's going to attach her son as her spouse. What's going on in the record? I went back to read this. When I see the record as a book, I always go to the beginning of the book to see the publication date. I need to know how close in history was the book written to the event. This book was published in 1933, 300 years after Thomas the Planter came to America. So that in itself does not carry a lot of weight. What carries weight and makes the book credible and probably accurate, I would put a lot of credibility into the data in the tree, is the fact that the man who wrote this, Frank Gardner, was actually a member of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. This man had knowledge of genealogy. He had the ability, the training, he knew the processes, and he probably did a lot of researching, studying old records. This man had good credentials. So I'm back at the page about Thomas the Planter. It says Thomas Gardner, the common ancestor of the Salem and Nantucket family came to America in 1624. A deposition on file in Essex County Court Papers, Volume 7, page 3, shows that he was born about 1592. Okay, so we have a fact. Thomas the Planter, born 1592. It's a fact. However, later in the paragraph, now here's where this man wrote a very good sentence. It says, he may have been related to the Reverend John White. And he goes on in the paragraph to prove how he could have been related to the Reverend John White. The real kicker is the sentence that ancestry assumed, and a lot of people are assuming, it says, John White, of St. John Oxford in England, father of the above, meaning Elizabeth White and the Reverend John, in his will, dated the X day of September 1616, mentions his daughter Elizabeth Gardner and appoints his son-in-law, Thomas Gardner, as one of the overseers of the will. Two things you cannot assume. You cannot assume that his daughter Elizabeth married Thomas Gardner, 
All you know for a fact is that daughter Elizabeth married a Gardner. You cannot assume that son-in-law Thomas Gardner is husband of Elizabeth. He might have had, John White might have had another daughter, Ellie Mae, and she married Thomas Gardner, that is the executor or overseer of the will. You cannot assume, unless you're doing the research on the whole rest of the family and you come across more information in that will and you prove that John had three daughters, one married a Gardner, one married a Smith, and one married a Jones. Well, you've now proved by process of elimination that daughter Elizabeth married Thomas Gardner. Until you do that proving, you cannot assume that his daughter Elizabeth married this Thomas Gardner. But what ancestry, what's even worse than this assumption, ancestry during the transcription is assuming that Elizabeth's husband, Thomas Gardner, is Thomas Gardner that this subject um, paragraph is talking about. They're assuming her husband is Thomas the Planter, born 1592. That's a big leap. All you know from the will is she married a Thomas Gardner, not this Thomas Gardner, born 1592, also called Thomas the Planter. And that's what happened at the point of merging. Ancestry's transcription is trying to link Elizabeth White as a spouse of Thomas the Planter, which is really her son. I'm going to kind of look at Anne and make sure before I attach this record that she's not a new person. Maybe John White, dad, had a couple of wives. I want to make sure that there's no other possibility as a mother of um, Elizabeth White in my tree. And Ancestry didn't see any other spouse of John White that could be her mother. So I'm going to cancel and then I'm just going to go ahead and select Anne. I will attach the record to Anne as a new person. I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is, again, having Thomas the Planter, her son, become not only clones, but now I've got my relationships all messed up. And all of Thomas the Planter that the book was about, all of his children are listed. There's five or six kids in this record, and they were all going to be loaded as new people. They're already in my tree as Elizabeth's grandkids. But now Ancestry wants to load them as Elizabeth's children, so it's creating new people for her. I, was, I have an option here. I can go back up to Thomas Gardner and click not a new person and select her true husband from the list. It recognizes there's another Thomas Gardner already a spouse of Elizabeth White in my tree. This Thomas was born 1565. This is the man that was actually mentioned in John White's will as the executor. So I could click him and add that record to him. But because this is so messed up, I have to be very careful. I'm going to stop right here and I'm not going to attach it to any spouse or children of her. I'm going to come back into Elizabeth's profile page and manually attach this record to her true husband, Thomas the Elder. I'm only going to attach this to Elizabeth and her parents. Now that record is in the Keeps profile. It's attached to her. I can come back to my clone with and go ahead and delete her. I've taken the record and attached it to the right lady I'm keeping. I've reviewed all these children to make sure they're not hanging out in limbo and they all have correct parents. So upper right corner under the Edit tab, click Delete Person. When you do that, Ancestry, Ancestry pop-ups says, are you sure you want to permanently delete this person from your tree? Yes, delete. I'm going to double check the child, one of the children of the lady I just deleted, Thomas George, 
go back in to look at edit relationships and see his mother information. Now he only has one mom, and that's good. And I checked all the other kids. They're fine. They're still linked properly in my tree with the mother of Margaret Fryer. So I'm still good. Back in the list of all people in the W's, I now only have one Elizabeth White. So let's recap the process of cleaning your tree. First thing you need to do is label people in your tree that you're going to keep when you come across a string of family names, surname that has issues. I'm going to label them from the pedigree view because this line and these links are attached to their children, to their grandchildren, etc. I must label from the pedigree view. You cannot do it from list of all people. It will also help to isolate those people and have them pop in the page when you have the label for keep or wife of in cases where women um, don't have a last name and there's 50,000 Marys there. I put wife of to help isolate who she is married to. It helps them pop from that list. In the process of cleaning in the other video, I, almost, I also mentioned you need to make sure that the date and the location formats are all uniform. And it's safer to put them into a format that Ancestry recognizes because your whole goal is to find more records on these people. If you have a format that Ancestry does not recognize, then it's not going to hunt its database for information on your family members. In cases where you do not know a woman's maiden name, leave it blank. It's much more important to have 15 Elizabeths in your tree than it is to put their married names in because it will block Ancestry from looking for, say, the First Lady Abigail. If she married John Smith, it's only going to look for Abigail Smith if you use that as her last name. But if her dad is George Jones, you need to leave it blank so it could hunt for Abigail's that could be George Jones's kids, but they're not going to look for an Abigail Smith if her true last name in the records is Jones. So leave maiden names blank if you don't know a woman's maiden name. When I'm working a person after um, I've labeled them all keep, if I've gone in and edited their name edited their events to make sure they only have one marriage to a lady instead of two or three, and edited their date formats and their location formats, and cleaned up their children clones and or their spouse clones and or linked them to pam family members, and make sure there's no clones of themselves as well. When I'm all done working a person, I usually go in and change the word from keep to clean. So I don't put my hands back on them again. I don't have to touch that John Whipple again. I've already know clearly in this list I've worked that guy because I don't sit here for the next 72 hours doing this tree. I have to go to work. I have to go down and eat dinner. I need to do a load of laundry. I'm going to come back to this in a couple of days and work on it for another few hours. I'm going to forget who I left off with unless I make notes. But this right here Changing it from keep to clean clearly identifies that I've reviewed that man and I don't have to touch him again in my list. And then when I'm all done with the tree and I've cleaned it completely, I will remove the keep, the clean, and the wife of that I typed in the suffix fields for everybody. I'm going to remove it. That's the last step. And I don't usually do it until I'm all done on a tree. Moving forward to help stop clones. Pay critical attention when a record is trying to be attached to a person or another person's tree you're trying to attach to your tree. If the information on the left says new person, 
but even more blatant is the space on the right is blank. Be very careful and investigate. It's going to be hard, but you must investigate. In this particular case, not only would it have created a clone of Thomas the Planter, but it would have linked him as spouse to his mother. And all his kids would have been her kids instead of her grandkids. It just m messed up the family relationship there. In another video I did about attaching records to family members in an Ancestry.com tree, I talked about this Francis. I was attaching a, a Find a Grave record to family members. And Find a Grave had the, a person in the graveyard named Francis Albert Camburn. In my tree, I had a Frank Camburn with a different birth year. I think it said about 1845. But because his name and his birth information were not the same, Ancestry was about to create a clone of my Frank. It didn't recognize I had a man already in my tree, and therefore I must click not a new person. Again, 99% of clones are created right here. When you're attaching records to other family members and Ancestry thinks it's a new person, it will go right in and create a new person. Boom, I have a clone Francis of the Frank that's already there. So you've got to be diligent at point of record attaching to family members to prevent in the future clones as well as relationship issues being created in your tree. So I hope this video stepped you through the various stages of difficulty of identifying clones, how to merge, how to double check, how to figure it out of who to merge, who to delete, and how to attach records to people you're keeping when you uh, are going to actually delete someone. It's been a work in process for me for a few years. I've never actually been able to compile it into a layout like this that stepped you through the various degrees of issues and difficulties that you're going to see in your tree. It's been something I've really been wanting to do for a few years because that is primarily the biggest issue I see in people's trees. There are clones, and when there are clones, Ancestry does not recognize them in easily as um, if you only had one person with the correct name and date and location formats to find records that will help expand your tree when you're doing your research. Thank you very much for watching this long video. I really appreciate any feedback. If you have any comments, please feel free. Thank you again.